Hi, my name is Jean Willis and I'm a children's author. I've written lots of stories about animals and today I'm going to read you a story about the time my sister and I went fishing for newts when we were very little. Now on here I've got, I've been fishing for newts today, I've got some in my pond in the garden. And this is Tiny and I call him Tiny because he's my newt. Um, before you touch a newt or a frog or any amphibians, you need to wet your hands first because otherwise you might damage their skin. I'm just going to get Tiny out to show you and then soon I'll put him back in the pond at the end. So here he is. Very lovely. There. And it's breeding season for newts at the moment so I've got hundreds of them in my pond. And they've laid the eggs and the babies are already swimming about in the water. So there he is, I hope you can see him there. He's got a very, very pretty tummy. You might be able to see the lovely orange belly just there and his nice golden eyes. I'm going to pop him back in the water now and read you the story. In a little while we'll let him go. The Bog Baby. Long ago, when we were little, me and Chrissy did something bad. We said we were going to Annie's house to play, but we didn't. We went fishing all by ourselves, which wasn't allowed. Chrissy said there was a magic pond in Bluebell Wood. It was only ever there in spring. When it rained, it made a huge puddle in the dell and pond creatures came. We could fish for newts, she said. I won't tell if you won't. So we went. We found the pond. It was squelchy around the edge. The bluebells squeaked under our boots. We fished and fished, but we didn't catch a newt. We caught something much better. We caught a bog baby. Just like that. He was the size of a frog, only round and blue with boggly eyes and a spiky tail. And I do remember he had ears like a mouse. He came swinging through the flowers and jumped into the water. He floated up and down on his back and sucked his toes. Well, that's when I fished him out. He didn't struggle. He sat in my hand and looked surprised. He was as soft as jelly, as if he had no bones. When we stroked him, he flapped his wings, although well, they were no bigger than daisy petals. They seemed too small for him to fly. But well, Chrissy said he might be able to fly if we blow on his wings. But we blew and blew. But all we did was blow him onto the mud. He didn't try to escape. He just sat still with his paws over his eyes. We put him in a jam jar, took him home and hid him in the shed. He was our bog baby. He wasn't meant to be a secret. We wanted to show Mum, but we daren't. If we did, she'd know we wouldn't go to Annie's. We made our bog baby a beautiful home in a bucket with gravel, shells, clean water. Whenever he saw us, he jumped up and down. We picked him up and played with him. We were very ticklish. We fed him on cake crumbs. We loved our bog baby. Our friends loved him too. We sneaked him into school in a margarine tub and when the teacher wasn't looking he played in the sand pit and the water tray. In the afternoon we slept in his tub on a piece of damp cotton wool. Chrissy made him a collar and lead and we took him for walks in the field. Once a crow nearly ate him but we scared it away just in time. We took great care of our bog baby. At least we tried. But he got sick. He didn't jump up and down anymore. He went pale and his wings drooped. He wouldn't touch his cake crumbs. We gave him all sorts, but he just spat them out. We wanted to ask Mum for help, but we daren't because of Annie. But the bog baby grew thinner. He wouldn't walk on his lead. He hid under his shell and 
he wouldn't come out, no matter how much we loved him. Mum found us in the shed. Chrissy wouldn't say why we were crying. We promised not to tell, but I blabbed. Mum wasn't angry though. When she saw who was in the basket, she smiled and her eyes went misty. She said she hadn't seen a bog baby since she was little. Please make him better, we cried. We love him so much. I know, she said. But the bog baby is a wild thing. It doesn't belong here. It wasn't meant to eat cake, or walk on the lead, or sleep in a tub. She picked up the bucket and we followed her out. If we really loved the bog baby, we had to do what was best for him, no matter how much it hurt us. That was real love. And that's why we let him go. Back where he belonged, living in the wood, playing in the pond, sleeping in the damp leaves under the moon. We never saw him again. But I think he grew up and had babies of his own. Because last spring, my daughter found the magic pond. And guess what she saw? Hundreds of bog babies, swings with the bluebells, catching flies, floating on their backs, sucking their toes. Well, that's what she told me. And that's what I believe. There, so that's the story of the bog baby. And now Tiny has climbed under his pebble on his bit of reed. So that means it's time for me to put him back in the pond. And if you like, you can watch me release him back with his friends. Just a minute. So here I am in the garden now with Tiny and I'm just about to release him back into the pond where I found him, which is the kind thing to do. Um, so if you want to watch, I'm just going to move over there and we'll see him swim away back to all his friends. Here we go. There you go. Bye.